Just relax. It's okay. You're calm. You're having a good time. Here, nothing can bother you. Here, everything is zip. Oop, sorry, time's up. Hope you enjoyed it. That'll be $35. Zen Game is an unofficial genre title you may have heard of before. You know, games that are less about the goal and more about the experience. I remember examples of it as far back as the Flash era, and you could probably trace back the roots to Harvest Moon and the like. The appeal is pretty obvious. Games are often used for escapism, and sometimes the escapism we want is just getting some peace and quiet for once. But it doesn't always leave everyone impressed, especially when it blends with other genres and it kind of starts to feel like the Zen label is being used as a shield. It's a conversation that came up again with the recent reverse city builder Terra Nil. Terra Nil is a clean-em-up. It's karmic penance for a chronic factorio player. Basically, it's a light puzzle management game where you use a variety of solar punk buildings to revitalize a square of post-factory game wasteland into a thriving ecosystem, eventually packing up all your stuff and leaving without a trace. It has Zen game written all over it, from the soundtrack to the visual style to the honest-to-god appreciate button at the end of every level. The initial concept game and later demo got a lot of positive buzz, and when the game finally hit, there was a resounding... That's it? It's not a very long game, or a very hard one. Only eight stages, four of which basically hold your hand the whole way, and people started to feel like the Zen label was definitely being used as a shield. Many found it pretty insubstantial for its $25 asking price, especially with it only clocking in at about seven hours, and oh boy, once you bring up playtime for money, that's when every gamer pulls the abacus out. About $3.57 per hour of gameplay, is that worth it? I don't know, was the $15 an hour you spent going to the movies worth it? Was the mm, 33.333 per hour you spent going out to dinner despite knowing damn well you had the time and energy to cook worth it? Look, I get that most people only have so much that they're willing or able to spend on games, and sometimes you just want to maximize leisure time for that budget, but I invite you to consider. League of Legends is free. The value per dollar is effectively infinite, so why not just play that forever? If your answer is, I'd rather die, then first... And second, we agree that both time and money can be differently valued in different situations. Assemble with Care is another game that invites this kind of thinking, costing $8 and clocking in at about an hour and a half. This little game about fixing broken things in between seeing glimpses of people's broken lives is kind of a puzzle game, but not in a remotely challenging way outside the final level. That leaves Zen games down on two common measures of quality, both value for money and challenge. But I think most people can look at Assemble with Care and just get it, you know? My wife used to sing this song to Izzy each night before bed, but I always work too late to join them. It's clearly not selling itself on being a 50-hour epic or providing the toughest brain teasers this side of Zaktronics. What it's selling is a warm art style, the tactile feel of taking things apart and putting them back together. There's a story, but that's not really what you're there for. The true experience being sold is one of place, to simply exist in another person's reality for a brief period of time. Usually an inviting prospect, right? Adios is $18 and barely two hours long. It's not even that zen unless you consider quiet, haunting contemplations of your own mortality to fit that bill, which, uh, wait, actually, hmm, shit, uh, all right, never mind, it's fine. Adios is a game about a pig farmer who has decided that he no longer wants to let his friend in the mob dispose of bodies. They both know what this decision means. The game is barely interactive, as you spend its short runtime listening to the two of them talk, doing little mini-games, picking dialogue options, or more hauntingly, not picking them. There's no twist, no branching paths, no secret ending where the farmer backs out or escapes. It's barely a game, hell, it's barely a story by some measures, since the majority of meaningful choices were made before the narrative began. Man, remember all that discourse in the 2010s about certain types of games not being games? This would have lit that whole thing on fire. But Adios nonetheless stuck with me with some subtle yet incredibly powerful atmosphere. In the limited time it takes to play, you get a complete understanding of the relationship these characters have, what life has become for the farmer, and why he decided to do this. Could this have been a short film instead of a game? Eh, maybe. But as a game, placing you, the player, in the position of the character can be potent. It's one thing to watch a long, unbroken shot of a character meticulously preparing what they know will be their final meal. It's well another to do it yourself, individually moving around all the ingredients in the dead silence of your own home, deliberately taking the action of sitting down at the table one last time. 
the Zen game is actually just a piece of a larger phenomenon, something I would call the vibe game if I were insufferably pretentious. Vibe games use interactivity differently than most. Usually when I think about games that make the best use of their own medium, I think of the ones that use interactivity to tell their stories. Like making tough choices about who lives or dies and having to live with the consequences to tell a story about the immense pressure of being the person saddled with saving everyone. It can also be as simple as presenting the opportunity to show defiance, entirely optionally, to show how resisting authority is a conscious choice. But vibe games aren't like that. They still have interactivity, but it's not necessarily the point anymore, at least not in the same way. Vibe games put absolute priority on immersion instead of agency. When you think about it, horror games basically fit this bill, and they're subject to the same trade-offs of the medium. Horror in, say, movies often leverages your lack of control as a passive observer. You know that the monster is creeping up on the hapless 25-year-old teenager, but there's nothing you can do about it. Horror games lose that critical component, and risk going stale if the player dies or restarts too often. But what they gain is putting you more squarely in the situation of horror. Sometimes the scariest games are those that are light on peril, but lay on the atmosphere so thick that your every action fills you with dread of the consequences. Even if they were just imagined. Whether games like Terra Nil, Assemble with Care, or Adios are for you is a question that goes beyond whether you're into their ostensible genres. It's more one of whether you can accept a different paradigm of a game's appeal. It's a question of whether you see games as fundamentally toys, fundamentally sports, or fundamentally art. Hmm. Maybe if we don't want to get involved in that one, fundamentally something that creates an experience. And perhaps it's a question of what you want to see in games. Everything I've talked about here is an indie game, all clearly passion projects and trying to push boundaries in their own ways. Think of it like supporting experimental indie films, or buying the off-putting sculptures from that one weird guy at the craft fair. There plainly isn't the same dollar-to-use value as something more mass-market, but supporting creatives is good for you and good for the world. And don't worry, liking mass-market things is still fine, I'll be buying and getting disappointed by Starfield just like everybody else, but there's always room for some good consumer karma, you know? Weird experimental games will probably always exist, but they'll never be mainstream. There are experiences out there beyond what any of us can really imagine. So many games only happened because people let go of old ideas of what games had to be. If you're willing to be so flexible as to go beyond those boundaries yourself, who knows what you'll find? It could be some exhilarating new experience, or it could be something where you just... like the vibes. Hey ho, reminder that the second channel exists, we have little snack-sized essays, and me having an existential crisis out of McDonald's. It also now contains a special companion video about Adios, discussing whether the pig farmer is going to hell. It's a character analysis. Look, don't worry about it. Next video will probably be Xenonauts 2, unless something big comes up or I get bored. Docket also includes two other secret projects of varying severity. I've been Rykloos, still a long way short of Nirvana. Thanks for watching.